Welcome back to my little channel. Today I'm going to talk about something I find interesting or something that lately has caught my attention, my eye, because the oikophobic nature of Western societies is rather damaging. And to illustrate that, I have a great example. And I'm using Sputnik as a reference on this one, but we're talking about Sweden. Now, for most of the people, hands go to their heads. But yeah, we're talking about Sweden. What are we talking about? Well, at the end of 2019, the Skurup municipality in Sweden's southernmost province of Skane adopted a ban on religious headwear. And this prompted national discussion because how dare you it's headwear is uh, religious headwear is obviously muslim so if you're against that you must be an islamophobe and there was a huge hubbub about that let me show you the article and then they had two women on television to debate it and this was especially interesting. Now, in the article, they say the debate was between a local centre-right moderate party politician and a teacher. And both of them were Muslim. And both of them were immigrant. And in the debate that then followed, in uh, whatever television programme, I can't remember, I, I read it somewhere else, funny enough, not here, um, there were two people talking. The local centre-right moderate party politician Lubna Stensakar Goransson and Noel Aisaoui. I assume I pronounced those right. If not, yeah. Both of these women were Muslim, but one was in favour of the hijab and the other one wasn't. And somehow... When this whole conversation got heated, um, then one of them well said, well, move away then if the hijab annoys you so much. Move away from Skurup or from Sweden, because it's my country too now, Aisawi replied, accusing her opponent of pure racism. Mind you, they're both Muslim. And they're both not Swedish. So the argument isn't about white supremacy, which is usually the point that's being made when people talk about something like this. The point wasn't even about whether a person is an Islamophobe, because obviously they're both Muslim. It's a bit unfair to say, well, but one of the two Muslims is an Islamophobe. Funny enough, most people in the discussion then sided with Aisawi, because how dare you speak ill against the hijab. Weird how that is though. If the hijab is so important to Islam, why do we have a Muslim without one? That's a completely different story, fair enough, and it's an interesting topic. I might address Islam again someday soon. But here we have a Muslim who wants to don the hijab and everyone who disagrees should leave Sweden because it's her country now too. But if it's her country now too, then that goes for the person she's talking with easily as much. And how about all the native Swedes that disagree with the hijab? Should they leave Sweden too? So... Here we see what oikophobia leads to. Now, obviously, Aisawi isn't oikophobic. I mean, she might be against the Swedish culture, but the Swedish culture isn't her own. So she doesn't care about the Swedish culture. But the fact that she has national carriage, national voice, is because of the oikophobia within Sweden. Trust you, me, that a lot of Swedes defended her. Now, luckily, there are also Swedes who didn't. Because it's her country too? No, it's not. It's not her culture. It's not her country. Because let's be honest, 
Asaui is not a typical Swedish name. Mind you, the same argument can, could be made for Lubna, but hey, you know what? She didn't tell anyone to leave the country. That's funny because this is something that I had happened to me personally as well when I was in an argument with, with a woman from Turkey. And even though I never said that she should leave the country, she assumed that I said that. And not a long time after that, she assumed that I should leave the country because it's her country now. The fact that we accept this sort of behavior speaks ill of ourselves, Because basically it shows that we don't care. Now don't get me wrong, not everyone doesn't care. There are plenty of people who do care. And they will then be called Islamophobic or racist or other meaningless terms. But we are never going to address the true topic. That it's okay for her to say to someone else, leave the country. But it's very offensive to have it said, to have it spoken out against her. There is a double standard in this, and that double standard comes from oikophobia, don't get me wrong. And we need to address that. Because if we can't, in the end, we are going to crush the Western world. Then again, there are plenty of people who will say, you know what, this is already crushing the Western world. Now, I will have a link to the article of Sputnik. And in the article of the Sputnik, you will see a few tweets from Swedish people um, basically speaking out against this Madame Asawi. But um, unfortunately, not a lot of people spoke out against it. And Sweden is in the danger zone. And not because of the Muslims. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there are good Muslims and bad Muslims, obviously, because that's true for every religion out there. But the danger of Sweden doesn't lie within the Muslim. The danger Sweden is facing are the traitors within, the oikophobes who destroy their own culture. I mean, let's be honest, the Australian, not Australian, stupid me, the SAS, the, the Scandinavian Airline Services, had an article, had an, not an article, a commercial talking about how there isn't anything really Swedish or Scandinavian, denying their own history, their own influence in Europe. Why? Because they're oikophobic. They don't care about their own culture. Their own culture is bad. But every other culture is good. We can't criticize other cultures, obviously. So yeah, there is that. Anyway, this is a short video. The link to the article is linked downstairs. I hope to see you all next time. And uh, criticism, as always, is more than welcome.